Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, welcome back. And today we are going to be doing the next upgrade to my pickup truck. We are going to be upgrading the tow mirrors on it. And this is the pickup truck right behind me. This is my 2006 Chevy 2500. And you may notice that it actually already has tow mirrors on it. The only problem with these tow mirrors is that in order to adjust the mirror part, it is a manual function, which means that you have to physically reach out and push the mirror itself. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this. However, from the factory, my truck is capable of supporting the power function, which has the switch in the door. So what we are actually going to do is upgrade the mirror and change it to where we have a tow mirror that has all of these functions. And right here in front of me is the mirror itself. This mirror is actually from Yida Motors, and it is packaged very nicely, as you can see right here. I could not think of a better way to package a mirror to ship it. But as we pull it out of everything, you can actually see the power cord to it, and it also has the signal in it. So these mirrors are the exact same as the factory equivalency, as you can see. They're exactly the same design-wise and pattern-wise, so they're going to be very similar to the stock ones. The only difference is this function right here is actually going to move itself or move it when I use the switch on the door and it's going to have a signal right here in the corner as well which is another nice little added feature. Now uh, the bottom mirror will still be manually moved and all of these tow mirrors are like that. That way that's for your trailer ring and you can also turn it so you can look down at the bottom end of the truck. We're going to do a full step-by-step -step on how to install this mirror on this truck. Uh, this application applies from a 2001 to a 2007 classic truck. And the tools to use it are actually very simple. Most people have these tools around their house. You will need a set of side snips, a pair of pliers, a T20 Torx head bit. Now this is just on the end of a socket, but any normal standard Torx head, very similar to an Allen wrench would work as well. You will need a seven millimeter socket, deep well socket, a 10 millimeter deep well socket, various extensions, a ratchet, and body molding tools. So with all of our tools here and the mirror here beside us, let's get started. Okay, so to take this door panel off is actually very easy. There's just a few things that you have to get out of the way before the door panel will lift off. There is a plastic cover over here on the outer side that covers up your Torx head screw that's in there. So that's when you'll need your Torx head bit to take that off. From there, once you get that loose, you can just move over and pop this little panel here off that goes on the other side of your door handle. So in order to do this, all you have to do is take your molding tool in behind it and pop it off and then it just slides out of there. Now the reason you have to pop the back of it off is because there's a little groove there on the front that slides forward and keeps it locked in there. Now, the reason you have to take this panel off is because when you lift the door off, it lets the handle slide through. That way it doesn't get caught on anything. From there, when you move up, you have to take off your door locks. Now I found out the best way to do this is to open it up to where you know your doors are unlocked. That way when you go to put it back together, you can see that your locked function goes towards the back. So in order to do this, you just take your tool, you put it in the back, pry it forward, and when you pull it up, it just slides out. And as you can see, this just slides for your door locks. And since we won't be messing with the door locks when we go to put it back on there, we know everything's going to be lining up. Moving further towards the front over here with your panels, you just slide another body molding tool in back here and pop this panel off. This has two little snaps, one at the top and then one down here at the bottom, and then it just has an alignment tab that slides down that keeps it in place. The only bolts that actually hold the door on is this Torx head screw over here, like I mentioned earlier, and then there are two, three, seven millimeter screws. Two of them are right here in the front. The longest one is up here, and then you have um, one behind this handle, and then you actually have one at the bottom underneath of the door here that you have to unscrew that I've already loosened to show you guys. That way it pulls out the bottom. And then once we get all of that undone, we're going to lift the panel off of the door. Also, don't forget to pop this little plug here off of the inside. That's a very simple thing to do. Once it pulls out, it does like that, and that just keeps the front end of the panel lined up.
Okay, in order to get to the back of the mirror where the bolts are, you have to take out this piece of sound foam here. It's easy just to pull up, and then you will see three 10 millimeter bolts. Now, in order to take these off, you just need your deep well, mainly because of the deepness of the threads. And a piece of advice that I highly recommend doing is taking either a paper towel or some piece of cloth and sticking it right here. Main reason being, when you go to take these off, there's nothing underneath there that stops these nuts and these washers from falling down into this. So if they fall down behind here, they do not fall down into the door panel. They fall down into the door frame itself in the bottom, and then they are very, very difficult to get to. So this is just something you can do really fast that will save you a lot of headache in the future in case an accident happens. Once the nuts are off of the back of the mirror here and the alignment pin is in the center, all you got to do is just pull on the mirror and it will actually come out. Now this you can either do with the help of somebody else or you can actually roll down your window and reach around the other side and support it if you want to. But the reason we had somebody else do it is just mainly because I didn't want the window down while we were pulling the door panel. Okay, so in order to load the panel off, all you have to do is just step up to it, and just pick up on it, and what happens is it will fall backwards. Now, when you're looking behind the panel, you can actually see that what holds it on are these little hooks that go all throughout the panel, which is actually a pretty nice thing because you ain't got to worry about any of the pops like on a lot of other models. So when you look at this, you may notice that the wiring setup over here is a little bit different than what yours may be for the speakers because I have aftermarket speakers in here. So if you see some wire colors that may be different than yours, don't worry about that because you don't have to worry about that when it comes to the mirrors. Um, you can actually see here where the gentleman before me when he put the mirrors on, he just clipped the wire up here for the power functions when he stuck the manual mirrors on, and he actually left it hooked up into the bottom of the switch panel here. So that's going to be the next thing we take off. In order to take off this switch panel, it pops up in the back with one of your tools, the body molding tools. However, the front of it's actually held on by a little seven millimeter screw, and that's located all the way up here in the front of the switch. So in order to do that, of course, you just take your ratchet and your socket, and then you just take that out, and then the switch panel itself will pop up. In order to lift off your switch panel, once you take off the screw at the front, all you have to do is stick your tool underneath of it, pry it up off the back to get the clip out of the plastic holder, and then you pull this out. There's an alignment tab here, and that's what that screw goes into through the hole. Now this thing, it will be a bear to get out of there because this lip right here sits back inside of that groove. So when you go lift it up, it's everything kind of contradicts each other, but it takes just the right combination in order for it to pull out. So once you pull it out, you can actually flip the switch panel over and you can notice that right here with all your switches that the colors are listed for your plug-ins. So like we mentioned earlier, the gentleman left this factory wiring here for the electronic mirrors and he actually had this one plugged into black and then he had this one plugged into blue. These are very easy to take out. All you have to do is squeeze this clip right here and then they just slide out. And once they slide out, what's holding the wire on the door are these plastic clips from the factory. So the, mi the mirrors that we, that Uta Motors sent me, actually has the clips that go back to replace these, which is a very nice feature. Um, if the mirrors that you happen to buy, if not from Uta Motors, from another company, if they happen to not come with the clips, you have to be very careful taking these out because you will need to reuse them in order to keep this wire in this groove right here. So that'll be the next thing we do. Okay, so once you go to line up your Gita motor tow mirror, all you have to do is stick the deep well 10 millimeter socket on there and tighten them down hand tight. But when I also say hand tight, I'm mentioning that you do have to tighten it down tight enough to where they don't want to come loose when you're going down the road. After you're done there, make sure you take out this paper towel right here that we stuck in earlier for safety measures. That way we didn't lose any washers or bolt or nuts. And then take the power wire that's fished in through the same hole that your alignment tab is in. Fish it through this hole right here that all of your other power functions come through. Pull it on through there. And then once again, flip over your switch. And remember that everything's color-coded, so it's easy to do. So black 
goes into black, which is the far one back here, and then your blue one just goes right in where it says blue. And then after that, there you are, you're done. Okay, so once we have the plugs into the back of the panel, we want to check to make sure that they work. This is an important step to do because if you go to put everything back together and you put the panel on and then you go to try it and it doesn't work, you got to take everything back apart. So this would be a good step to do that. So simply all you have to do is just switch to the side, to the driver's side here, and then you use this little four-way panel just to move the mirror. And they work. And then since you don't have to have power to do your flashers i just reach over and turn on my four-way flashers and as you can see the signal works in the mirror okay now that everything is good we will then begin the steps needed or necessary to put everything back together okay so yida motor supplies the clips in the zip ties that are required to reinstall the power wire back into the slot that it needs to be so whenever you're putting in a zip tie you need to remember to be careful with it and not to over tighten it that way you don't crush the wires when putting the panel back on the truck make sure that you put your screw back into the front of your switch panel here that way it doesn't want to pop back out as you're going down the road another little trick is push back your lock function that way when you go to slide the panel on it fits into this hole right here so it's easier to push on and off. So now all you have to do is pick up on the door, making sure that you miss your handles here. Push it in. Make sure everything's lined up on it. You should. Make sure not to hit everything. It's lined up. The door panel should slide back down where it wants to be. There she is. When putting all your screws back in for your door, remember that this pop rivet style over here goes into this section. You have a screw that goes in there, a screw that goes in behind your door handle, your Torx head goes right back here, and I mentioned at the beginning of the video that there's actually one that you're supposed to take out on the bottom. You actually do not need to take that out. That screw does not hold the door panel onto the door. It holds this cradle section here into the door and keeps it from coming out. So you don't even need to bother with that one taking it on or taking it off. So just leave that one like it is. And then once all that's back together, you just slide your piece back over your door handle. And then you make sure, remember how we said we had this on the unlock thing. That way we know that the orange piece goes towards the back. And then we put all that on there and then you should be done and we'll move on to the final step of the mirror. Okay, so here's what the final mirror looks like and we actually have the heat function turned on to it which is very nice. So it's supposed to thaw out all everything ice or water anything that gets on it you can actually stick your hand against it and feel that it's quite warm a good comparison would be to this this feels cool to the touch and this is warm up here it's about 50 some odd degrees out here and this is actually warm to the touch and it feels quite nice so you can tell it's going to work really nice on a cool day uh, this out here actually has a signal function on it as you can see so it's pretty bright you can see it all the way back here it's a very nice addition and then the, of course the, the power function so when it goes to mess with it there on the inside there they are okay alrighty guys so that'll be the conclusion for the video I apologize for the truck running in the background but we have to have that for the power for the uh, heated function to come on that way it doesn't drain the battery on the truck uh, once again this is Southern Silverado if you guys have any questions please ask leave a like and subscribe thank you guys very much